On today's program, Andrew Womack will inspire you to reach out and take the healing that is yours in Jesus Christ. God wants you well, and that's the gospel truth. Now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Monday's broadcast of the gospel truth. Today I'm beginning my fifth week of teaching on God wants you well. And I tell you, I've covered a lot of material. This is exciting to me because it's uh, made a difference in my life. You know, if I didn't know these truths, if God hadn't have shown me this, uh, I wouldn't have one of my sons. He died, and by the grace of God, because he had shown me these truths, I knew how to respond, and he was raised from the dead. I wouldn't have a granddaughter who was born a year after he was raised from the dead. My life would be different. It would be totally different if I didn't know these truths. And I just praise God daily for the difference this has made in my life. And, you know, there have been things in my life. I, my dad died. My grandmother, who basically raised me when I was real little, she died when I was very young. And it wasn't God's will for them to die. And my life was different because I grew up without a dad. I was with a number of people who died that it wasn't God's will for them to die. It wasn't time. They weren't old. They were young. My dad was 54 when he died. And, you know, praise God, I've seen both sides of this. I've lived with seeing someone you love die and grow up without a father. I have seen my son die, but by the grace of God, he was brought back. I've got a granddaughter today because of that. I've lived on both sides of this, and I'm telling you, seeing the healing is the better side. I would recommend it. And that's what I've been teaching on. And I've been talking about why isn't everyone healed? And we've covered a lot of really, really good things. Today, I want to play another one of our testimonies. My television department has been taking some of the miraculous results of this teaching on healing and how it's changed people's lives. And we've made a Healing Journeys Volume 1 and then a Healing Journeys Volume 2. I think that there's like five testimonials on each one of those, so the ten testimonies of miraculous healing. There might be more or less. I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, some great, great testimonies. And today I want to play the testimony about Scott Forsyth. And he was a young boy who had a uh, problem. Let's see here. I've got it written down. It was Barrett's esophagus, which leads to esophageal cancer. He was unable to eat. He was losing weight. Um, his life was going down rapidly. And I mean, it in the natural, he could have died. And he got hold of our Healing Journeys Volume 1 DVD and specifically the testimony of Hannah Teredes, this little English girl who was healed when she was three and a half years old. And his physical condition was very similar to Hannah's. And because of that, he related to it and he believed God, and there was just a miraculous healing. And on this uh, DVD where Scott and his family give their testimony, it also shows him after his healing coming and meeting Hannah, the little girl that inspired his healing. And I think that this is really going to bless you. So let's watch this DVD, and I'll come back at the end of the program. Some people think that it's like hard to remember being sick, but I, I remember it just like it was yesterday. I thought that God was punishing me. punishing me, punishing me. It's really hard to get across how hard for a parent it is when you have a chronically, and now they're telling you a life-threatening, you know, problem there is with your, with your child. Well, it got to the point where I, I knew I, I'm not a physician. I couldn't heal them. All I could do was pray, and I did that a lot. Well, when Scott was 12, he was having a baby four um, migraines a week. It felt like something was just like pressuring against my head, like just squeezing it, and I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even have the lights on. If I had a bad migraine, just turn off the lights, kind of just lay down in my room. He just couldn't attend school half the time, and he just felt miserable. So 
you know, the pediatrician sent us to a neurologist and they ran MRIs and put him on experimental drugs and it just nothing seemed to be helping. Um, and at our, our church, they had a healing prayer ministry and they prayed for him uh, on several occasions. It all started really with our healing team at church. And Scott came and he had migraines and um, it, was, it was just terrible to see a child suffer that way, the way he suffered. And, uh, but he was, he was so open and receptive and we prayed and he had faith. And then after a time, there was a breakthrough. And at first they sort of let, they were a little bit better, but then they just went away completely. The migraines did stop. So praise God, you know, we were very happy about that. And then we did well, he did well for, it seemed like a few months. Um, and then the stomach problems started. I felt this compression in my stomach and this like sharp jabbing feeling that someone was like stabbing my stomach. We noticed that when he ate wheat, especially, um, it just seemed like he really had a hard time either digesting it, but we started to notice that it was pretty much around every time he ate wheat products. So on our own, we tried a gluten-free diet. And, the, and again, this was maybe, this went on for, oh, months and months. It just got so bad I couldn't do anything. And the pediatrician started to get concerned and sent us to a gastro specialist at Texas Children there in Houston. They put this little camera in a tube and they had to sedate me, like put me to sleep. They would put the tube down my throat and look at my esophagus and my stomach and see what was really going on. It just wasn't fun at all. He found something called Barrett's esophagus, which from what we understand is unheard of in children. The doctor told us that this was, um, you know, uh, lucky. He told us, first of all, he said, oh, this is lucky that um, that he found this and we knew that it wasn't lucky it was you know uh, definitely a god thing because he said had he not found it years could go by and then you know you, it can turn into esophageal cancer or you know a life-threatening condition um so the the doctor was you know very specific that you know we can't ignore this we have to be very aggressive at, tr at treating this you can't, um, we didn't have to follow up with scopes. We tried not to say too much actually around Scott because we didn't want to frighten him. He knew how bad he felt, but he didn't realize how bad the situation was. I found out later that it was life-threatening. My son's sick and I'm not here to help out. It's, uh, but it's something you have to do as a father. You gotta go and make a living. My dad was gone most of the time, and that was very disappointing because I know a lot of people don't, like, they like their parents, but they don't really connect. That That's the exact opposite with my dad. We connect so much. We are great friends. We get along really well. We love each other. And having him gone most of the time when I was sick, I, I was really disappointed. I do a lot of training, I do a lot of client contacts and that sort of thing. So to do that I have to go to the clients or where we are and and we're all over the world. We're a pretty small company but, uh, but we do have an office in every major seaport. When Scott was the sickest it seemed like I was uh, away and gone. It was not a pleasant time. He was in China and he was at his wit's end because he couldn't do anything. All I could do was take pictures, mail them to him, talk to him. He'd say, well, what are they going to do to him now? I'd say, well, they're running another test. This was hard on the whole family. Our daughter, who's usually very stoic and doesn't show a lot of emotion, you could see the, the worry. She was very worried about her little brother. Sometimes, especially whenever my dad was away on a business trip that he had to go to out of the country, I would go with my mom and brother to the hospital. Sometimes I would miss class. 
I remember it being really hard on my mom. I mean, I knew that somehow Scott was going to get through it and God was going to take care of him, you know, by healing him some way. I didn't know how, but something that really concerned me was my mom. She had this huge burden put upon her and she got to where she couldn't eat and she was losing weight and it was really troubling because I didn't know how to help her. It was a little hard being on the road and I could call home and uh, tell that Vicki was struggling but uh, she seemed to bear up too. She's a real strong lady. One of our good friends, Miss Evelyn from the Healing Prayer group, she gave us this DVD of Andrew Womack. I had seen this um, on Andrew Womack and sent for it, and then it came this day. And I was so excited because I remembered the story of Hannah was on there. So I, I run to the phone, call Vicki, Vicki, the Healing Journeys came. Can you watch it? Can you, can you watch it? She said, well, Dave will be home tonight. Actually, we'll all be home tonight. And so we can, we can watch it. So I said, I'm going to bring it right over. Vicki, this is it. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited about you to watch it now. Evelyn said, I, I would like for all of you to watch it together with him. And it so happened, our daughter was home. My husband was in town, in the country, actually, which it was, you know, good. The night Evelyn brought the, the CD over, uh, I said, well, sure, let's have a look. Uh, we jumped right out at him. He was screaming and said, look, this is it. We'd had all kind of tests done at the local hospital. They referred us to a, a specialist children's hospital in London. She had a camera investigation, and they put a camera down her throat when she was asleep under anesthetic, and they, they took some biopsies. And when the biopsies came back, they said that she had a really rare autoimmune disease. So her immune system would go into overdrive. Whenever she, she ate something, it would go into overdrive, thinking it was like some sort of foreign invader and attack it. She started um, deteriorating. She started losing weight. She was always very, very small, but now she started losing weight, um, and her hair was getting brittle, and her, her skin started going like translucent, and she, she lost energy. Some people were telling me that um, you know, God wanted to heal her, but sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. I was, I was getting all different types of advice, um, some extreme. Some advice was saying, well, maybe you've done something, maybe this is judgment on you. Um, and I, in my heart, I got to the point where if the Lord wants her to die um, for his glory, then so be it. And that's how, how messed up I was in my, in my thinking, if you like. I went home, my wife and, um, and Hannah was in hospital. I went home and went on the internet and downloaded lots and lots of teaching, um, God Wants You Well series, all free from Andrew's website. Um, and listen to them over and over. And Ashley would download all these teachings onto my MP3 player, and I'd, I'd be laying in the hospital bed next to Hannah, kind of getting this revelation. Are you listening to this, Hannah? <laughs> you know, God wants you well. You've been healed, and we just got to receive it. Whoever we told up until that point, whether it was pastors, um, you know, leaders, whoever it was, mature Christians, they would always be horrified and, oh no, and you know, they'd be horrified at how bad it was. Um, but when we told Andrew, he just he just smiled and said. Piece of cake for Jesus. So Father Jamie and I just agree, and we thank you that by the stripes of Jesus, Hannah has already been healed. I just sat there quietly with the family, hoping my son was watching, hoping he would absorb all this, understand it, and accept it, and, uh, and he did. Hannah really stuck out to me because she had a lot of the same things that I had too, all these stomach problems, but she was like much younger, so it started to get worse. And seeing, like, I could relate to that, and so she could be healed, and so I knew that so could I. It was kind of time to go to bed. Like, as I was walking down the hall, I just felt this need to pray with him because everything on the DVD just made so much sense, and I was just so thankful that God had revealed this teaching to us. In the name of Jesus, you are healed, and we love you so much, and dear Lord, please help Scott just accept his healing. I just went to sleep, and then the next morning, I felt normal. I felt completely better. 
and I was hungry, which before, for the entire time, I really wasn't hungry at all. I barely ate. The next morning, I didn't know what to do at this point because we had, we were living on a schedule. You know, he had all these medicines that he was taking. And I said to my husband, what do we do? And he said, well, I think we need to leave that up to Scott. Ask him, see if, what he thinks. Scott said, I don't need them. I don't want them. He said, I want to eat. Well, when he had that first big meal, I said, well, this, this will be the proof. <laughs> because I'd seen him before in, in horrible pain after eating just a little bit. And that's, this, this will be the, the evidence here. We waited, there was no pain, there was no vomiting. Praise God. At the time I thought, I hope this isn't too good to be true and that's not the way to think. <laughs> because it, it is the way it is, it, it, it happened. It, it just took me a little while to, uh, to grow into it. The next day when we walked into the church, the pastor knew something was different. Vicki was giddy and she was, she was elated and I think everybody was. Um, uh, there's a part of me that's saying, well, we prayed and God worked and isn't that what we should expect and so I there was a part of me that wasn't surprised but then you know another part of me is wow <laughs> you know look what God's done I remember the pain and the stress I was going through and now I feel fine I feel great I get to do like fencing I get to do a lot of different things with my friends. Life is so good now. He is a normal boy. He is able to eat whatever he wants, whenever he wants. I'm not the food police anymore. It just feels great. It feels like this like burden I had is just gone. And that's like through the name of Jesus. On July 2nd, 2009, Scott and his mom, Vicki, came to Colorado Springs for the 2009 AWMI Summer Family Bible Conference. They not only took the opportunity to participate in the conference events, but also took advantage of the chance to actually meet the little girl whose healing journey testimony was instrumental in changing Scott's life. Hannah's testimony really like, inspired me for my healing and I'm just so excited to meet her today. And I got her a little gift. I th think she likes bunnies, so I thought this would be good for her. And I am just excited to meet her and tell her how much her healing meant to me for my healing. Just a regular boy. Praise God. I believe that that testimony blessed you. It blesses me. And you know, one of the things that is so exciting to me is that in the beginning of our ministry, I would preach on healing or something like that, but then I had to physically lay hands on people and pray for them. And if I didn't do it, I mean, it was just like everything was limited and confined to flowing through me. But now through our books, through our CDs, through our DVDs, through these healing videos, and the people that have come along and helped me, they are putting these things together. And these truths are now being packaged in a way that, like every time we send out a CD, it's sending out a little missionary that can go and touch multiple people. And this Healing Journeys Volume 1 that we put out about Hannah's testimony went and touched Scott 
And because of that, it wasn't me that did the prayer. It wasn't me that ministered to Scott. Now, see, with Hannah, the one that inspired Scott, I went and prayed with her, and I was a part of this. But after we put her testimony out, Scott got hold of these truths, saw the testimony, and he just believed God. And you know, this really excites me because I'm just one person. I cannot be everywhere. I can't pray for every person. I'm limited. But the truth is what set him free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. God's Word is truth. And it's these truths that are going out through the CDs, through the books, through all of these little pamphlets that we put out about God wants you well, through the healing journeys, DVDs, and all of these things. And the reason I'm emphasizing this is because it was the Word. It says in Psalms 107, verse 20, that God sent His Word and healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. It's the Word of God that sets you free. Proverbs chapter 4 says, God's Word is health unto all of your flesh and life unto those that find it. It's the Word of God that ultimately is going to change you. Now, the Word could be spoken through a person. The Word could come as some person lays hands on you. I'm not saying that we don't do those things, but I'm saying that too often we put our faith only in a person. We only think, if I could do this, it's the Word that's going to set you free. And the Word that you've been hearing on these exact programs about God wants you well it, that same word has been used to heal hundreds and thousands of people. Blind eyes have opened. Deaf ears have opened. People have been raised from the dead. Miracles of every kind have taken place. And I'm just wanting to assure you that what has happened for other people will work for you. The Scripture says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, I believe it is, that God's word is an incorruptible seed. You know, when you plant seeds in the ground, some of them just don't work. Some of them rot. Some of them are bad seed. But there is no bad seed from God's Word. These truths that we've been sharing on God wants you well, I gave this testimony today of Scott who got healed because he heard and believed the Word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word, and it, and it produced a miraculous healing. That same Word will work for you if you'll just work it. You have to put it in your heart. You have to protect it. You have to stand against all of the wiles of the devil and all of the things that he does to try and talk you out of what God's Word has to say. But I'm telling you, God wants you well. I'm giving testimony of it. You know, here on television, this is the only way that I know to illustrate and to show you that this isn't in word only. It's in deed. The power of God is flowing. These truths are real. It's working. There's fruit. You're either going to have to call Scott and his parents, me, and the terror does. Little Hannah's parents, all of us are going to have to be liars. You're going to have to say that we're just fabricating and making this up. Or you're going to have to deal with the fact that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God wants you well. I tell you, that's the truth. I encourage you to listen as our announcer gives you some information. And please call or write and get these materials. We've got these materials that we've entitled a better health care package. Amen. It's going to be better than what the United States government puts together. This will guarantee, this will release the power of God in your life. So listen and then call or write today. Andrew's complete teaching titled, God Wants You Well, is available in a brand new book for £8.50. Request book number T330 when you contact us. You can also get this teaching in a companion study guide for £17.50. Request study guide T430. The entire series is also available on either CD or DVD as seen on our daily TV program. Each is available for £13. Request item T1036C for the CDs or item T1036D for the DVDs. Or you can receive the book, study guide, and album as part of the Better Healthcare Package. The package includes your choice of either the CD or DVD series, the new God Wants You Well book, along with the companion study guide, plus Healing Journeys Volume 1 and Volume 2, and the Healing Scriptures CD. The entire package has a catalog value of 68 pounds, but today we'd like to offer it to you for 50 pounds. 
To get the Better Health Care Package, request item T4505. Be sure to specify CD or DVD. The third teaching in the God One Too Well CD series titled, Why Isn't Everyone Healed? is available for three pounds. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this third CD free of charge. Our helpline is closed today to allow our employees to celebrate the holiday. But you can always reach us through our website where you can order ministry materials online 24 hours a day, seven days a week at awme.net. If you prefer to write to us, our address is AWME. That's Andrew Womack Ministries of Europe, P.O. Box 4392, Walsall, WS1, 9AR, England. We hope to hear from you today. We'd like to point out Andrew's upcoming speaking schedule. Mark your calendars to come meet Andrew at one of these events and let the Word of God transform your life. He'll be in Warwickshire, England for the Grace and Faith Family Camp, May 28th through the 31st. For those of you looking forward to our annual Summer Family Bible Conference, remember to mark your calendars and join us in Colorado Springs, June 28th through July 2nd. I'd like to give you a special invitation to join me on Friday the 28th of May through Monday the 31st of May. This is the bank holiday in the UK, and we are having our Grace and Faith Family Camp at Stone Lee Park in Warwickshire. And I tell you, I'm excited about this. We're expecting a large turnout. It's going to be four days over this bank holiday. And I will have also Wendell Parr ministering with me. I believe that David Hinton, a six foot seven um, cowboy, is going to be there ministering in music. And it's going to be a great time. There are accommodations, motel accommodations. There's accommodations for caravans, uh, tents, all kinds of things. We have a website for this. They have that address on the screen. You can actually go to that website. It'll give you all kinds of information, booking information. Of course, you can contact our offices. But remember these dates over the bank holiday, May the 28th through the 31st at Stonely Park in Warwick. Karis Bible College in Colorado Springs is rich spiritual soil. 2007 graduates Russ, Judith, and David Forguston have planted a new Bible college in Chennai, India with 60 first-year students. They've seen 350 pastors transformed through teaching Andrew Womack's Discipleship Evangelism course. In addition, they manage 162 small business loans, helping India's outcasts lift themselves from poverty. For a complete report on this story, go to awmi.net and click on today's news feature. Invest yourself in Karis Bible College today.